Ask the Mayor on KWBE with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. And uh, it's a call-in question. If you want to write some questions down, send them in. We can do that. We'll talk about some questions that were sent in in just a little bit. But the most important thing of the day, Mayor, is the temporary solution at the splash pad, isn't it? You know what? (laughs) We have some great minds. Yeah. Um, You know, we have found that the control module, uh, you know, for whatever reason, is in high demand because it went out in must be 5,000 other splash pads across <laughs> across the country uh, and one not very far from us. Yeah. And so there are people that are trying to find some solutions. And, you know, our folks have found a temporary solution using timers uh, to turn it on and turn it off. And, and uh, so we're, we're going to get it going kind of the old-fashioned way mm-hmm. Why we still try to get the control module. Yeah. So at least kids and their families can use it, and I think there's a 30-minute limit on the timer. Yep. And the hours are going to be 11 in the morning till 8 at night, which leaves plenty of time. So yep. So it's kind of nice to at least see it available out there. You know, that, that's true. And, and if you think about summer, we also know always the, the end of July and the first part of August are typically some of the hottest times out there. So yeah. uh, at least we've got that solution, and, and uh, you know, we're sorry that we weren't able to get it up and running until now and but the temporary solution is like i said we've got some great minds that have created a temporary solution around uh you know a challenge i know if you're a tennis player you've used timers before at courts i think the night lights at least i haven't been out there to play tennis in i don't know how many years (laughs) but uh, there was always the timers there so you put up with it to do that so absolutely it it is a good solution and it works at least exactly right temporarily and the water is still nice and cool so that's the whole that's the (laughs) the whole whole point absolutely (laughs) yep well did want to a person had mailed in a lot of questions to us one difficulty about the questions it has to do with property taxes and property tax relief through a gambling initiative petition that was passed, which resulted in the casinos that are going to be built at racetracks in Nebraska. And the questions are basically along the line is, I thought that was supposed to provide property tax relief for the state of Nebraska. Unfortunately, we can't really answer the questions from a city standpoint because it deals with a different uh, jurisdiction, the state state of Nebraska, because that they control how much of that goes out in relief from the gambling so right and they would control if we get it what we would get if any yeah Mm -hmm. i mean that's that's kind of the it's in the state coffers and the state coffers would Mm -hmm. then pass it to the cities if that's one of the things that they can do for property tax relief and this person who wrote in obviously went to a lot of work they got a list of uh what's been taken in over a three-month period at the warhorse casino And then the percentage of that, that's supposed to go to property tax relief, and they're wondering where that's at. So we congratulate the person for going going to all this work and being concerned about it. It's just that it's more of a state legislative, state revenue department question, I think. It It, it is. And, and, you know, again, they have to figure out how they're going to do that. Is it a home tax credit? Is it? I mean, there's a lot of options that they're probably looking at, and I don't know if they... I guess I haven't read anywhere where how we're going to get the property tax relief from that. Yeah. They do have that property tax relief credit fund off income tax, and they've also applied state reserve funds toward property tax right. relief. But as far as its tie with gambling, uh, yeah. that's kind of a... I, I guess I would suggest for the person who wrote in all the questions, contact your state senator yes. or contact uh, the Department of Revenue. That would yes. be a couple of places a couple to start. A couple of places. That's so right. At least you might get some... But we appreciate them sending in the questions. Absolutely. It's just yes. not, But along that line... Cities do use property taxes. You also use local sales taxes as a revenue source. Um, Maybe just a little bit about, and we talked a little bit about this, I think, last week in the context of your two-year budget you're putting together. But your philosophy regarding, you know, property taxes, where do you set them at? What do they go for? Why are they important uh, for a city? Sure. Um, And that's a good question. I mean, you know, I think we all have seen how many protests are coming up with property tax value uh, you know valuations went mm-hmm. up in, including mine mm-hmm. you know i looked at mine and it went up close to 14 percent what was uh, your reaction when you first saw that oh my reaction first was how do i protest <laughs> <laughs> but then i started uh, you know talking to the neighbors and and my 14 percent residential wise is kind of in line with a lot of places and mm-hmm. and then we have to think back as the fact that it's 
you know, it's calculated over a multi a multi year period, and and so, you know, I, I think I think there's even some legislative laws about mm-hmm. what percentage you have, and yeah. you know, if you look at real estate from oh, starting almost with COVID of 2020 through 2022, um, wow, I mean. Mm-hmm those prices what people were paying for homes really went up and that's what governs what you're going to see and that's what governs what you're going to see now and and so you know at the end of the day um you know i'm gonna pay the increase yeah (laughs) begrudgingly huh (laughs) well you know at first i thought about that but then i thought you know what i live in beatrice and as i drive through i look at the trails Mm -hmm. and you know that's one of the things that help keep the trails up Mm-hmm. And I look at all the parks that we have and all the green space, and it makes our community a better place to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, even on the campaign trail uh, a year ago, people talked about how great the trails were and how to expand the parks and their trails. And then you got the water park, which, you know, we probably haven't taken much of an increase there because we know it's a great opportunity for the kids to swim. Um, and then if you look across all the other amenities that we have for a town of 12,500, it's really a pretty good bargain, mm-hmm. and that's where you look at your property taxes and, and say, you know what, you know, now I understand because I really don't want to give up on the trails. I don't want to give up on the parks, and, you know, we've expanded some into Pickleball, which is kind of also, um, you know, expanded across the country. And, and so as you think about that, there's a lot that goes into planning a budget and keeping the community in a great place with the amenities that we have. Sometimes you almost have to look back, say, over a five- or ten-year period to really get the full understanding of how many things have gotten done with two revenue sources in the right. city of Beatrice. Yeah. You know, if you look at it just month to month and you, de- you don't see a particular project going, you think, oh, well, I'm paying all these property taxes right. and I'm not getting anything. But if you go back a little deeper, say a decade or five years... Yeah. It's pretty amazing what's gotten done in just and, short amounts of time. And, and you know, look, uh, I mean, if you think about just the trail system alone, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how many miles of trail we have. And you think about we, you know, own that trail all the way up to Cortland, mm-hmm. um, and it gets used. Yeah. I mean, that's the one nice thing. The amenities that we have get used a lot. And so um, in a lot of respects, it's a bargain. Mm-hmm. It's not going to seem like a bargain, but it really is a bargain when you, like you said, you look over five years and see what we've, five to ten years and see what we've done yeah. to the community to keep it in a nice place and, and keep the amenities where I think people want them. Speaking of trails, uh, they were what pouring the first uh, on that connection between 24th right. and 26th. The other day, have the forms up and everything. That's been kind of delayed by rain a little bit, it like has. everything else, <laughs> but that'll be nice to kind of just at least take care of that gap you had there not only it will be nice it's going to add a layer of safety Mm -hmm. for kids that are walking to high school Mm -hmm. i mean you know when you think about it that's right along the highway there and so it was a missing piece and i think they've done a really pretty good job based on the weather i mean we'll take rain yeah you know we'll take (laughs) rain um but it does it does hamper a number of projects yeah you know, you talk about trails and you go up to Lincoln, and I understand that's a much huge, huge, bigger tax base, but you look at the network of trails and bike paths and things, and uh, we're not the only one that thinks it's worthwhile in terms of drawing people to a community. To, no, absolutely uh, not. And it is, you know, um, I think, you know, too, one of the things that I've seen in the last four or five years, you know, I think we've got more people that are active whether it's hiking, biking, mm-hmm. walking, than ever before. And those things just help, mm-hmm. I think, all of us keep in, in, in pretty good shape. Yeah. Now, I'm not a runner, <laughs> obviously. But, um, I don't think my knees will hold up on no, that but, account anymore. <laughs> but, but again, it's just it, it, you, you walk through, and, and goodness gracious, um, talk about revenue generating. Think about all the... Little League baseball tournaments and softball tournaments that come to Beatrice Mm -hmm. and people stay here and then they eat here and they buy fuel here. So some of those things that we have to pay, use for uh, property tax money, Mm -hmm. go to bring additional revenue into the city Mm -hmm. of Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Also creates lodging tax, which then turns over again when you get project improvements, tourist improvements. 
which we've seen a few of those lately too. Right. So, we just uh, would we just get a grant? Yeah, um, a grant on Hannibal, as yeah. a matter of fact, and then also the uh, scoreboard, a scoreboard project. So, the, so you know, the, those things come back, and, and those grants are absolutely wonderful to uh, not have us to have to increase mm-hmm. property tax. By the way, on the subject of trails, I know it, having the works, the uh, kind of a combined effort between the city, state of Nebraska, the homestead, the trail connection between uh, River Road and eventually the uh, Heritage Center mm-hmm. out at the homestead. Any news on that of late? Uh, well, we're anticipating to hear something in the next uh, year, year mm-hmm. and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that doesn't mean we're going to break ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <It> takes <laughs> a while. It sometimes <laughs> takes a while. Um, I do know as I... I, I spent some time with um, our finance director and, and our city administrator yesterday looking at budgets. Um, in this two-year budget, we'll put some money in for the design. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, the grants, I think, are like 90-10, and some of that you have to pay up front. So we're going to mm-hmm. start putting some money aside. So when we get to the design stage, it's already uh, in the bank. Yeah. A connection between Hannibal Park and the Veterans Park area in town, is that a little bit farther down the road? Do you think? I think it is, yes. Okay. Yeah. Kind of first things first, get first this one first. that has gotten right. started and kind of get it down yeah. the road. So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bob Morgan with us today on Ask the Mayor. We'll have more in just a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor today with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. Water main work continuing on East uh, Court Street, and they are uh, gradually moving west toward the downtown area. That is correct. I think what the next section was going to be like, 13th to 11th yeah and then, and then uh, they'll do 10th and 9th mm-hmm. and then boom we're in downtown doing a couple blocks at a time then. doing two try to do two blocks at a time um so far it's really gone pretty well i think the nice thing is i think we've done a pretty good job of making sure people's water as they get hooked back up to the new system um are not inconvenienced for a very long period of time mm-hmm. and that's still the goal of, of the water department as as we go through and do that um, matter of fact, I think it's next week sometime I have a meeting with, uh, the, of course, the traffic engineers and, and a couple of other people to figure out once we hit um, downtown, what's the safest way to, to route cars mm-hmm. through the downtown Why we, you know, basically go from 6th down to 4th. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems to be the area that we want to, you know, keep in mind of, of safety, but also we want to keep in mind that you know, that's a pretty good stretch of, of businesses there. So yeah. it's going to be one of those juggling acts to try to um, get through it the best we can. Probably be the most painful time of the project, Pro- or one of them. It'll least. probably be one of the, the most painful. I think right now it hasn't been too painful. Yeah. Um, but again, we're, we're talking about a highway where you've gotten, you know, three lanes, and it's a little easier to do that at that yeah. point. So Yesterday at the Board of Public Works meeting when um, they were talking about the uh, highway project the state is going to do, and the reason for not, you know, putting the disability ramps back in when you're replacing right. concrete at this time. What's the timing on that? Is that next year that they're doing that? Or yeah, they're, they're going to come in next year and do that. Okay. Um, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to do something, tear it out, and then have them redo it. <laughs> yeah. And so I think they're coming in next year. Okay. Uh, as far as that uh, water main work, just trying to remember, the old mains that are in there that are 80, 90, 100 years old, do they remain there? Do they take them out entirely? I couldn't remember i didn't know if they laid them alongside and left the old equipment in there or what i'm thinking the old is still left in there i see i don't remember seeing a lot of old pipe coming out yeah um, and you got to realize some of those cast are, iron <laughs> well they're cast iron and they could be 20 25 feet deep yeah because uh, some of them went way, would go way down there yeah. and so um they're probably still you know, I'll check on that because I don't know the right yeah. answer, but I sure haven't seen a lot of pipe coming out. Being in the ground that long, you wonder how far some of those sections of pipe were to failing, or were they pretty close in some areas? Or I don't know how they measure that. If it's possible to even measure, you know, if there were any potential break points where they were worried about. Or well, Steve whatever. Kelly, uh, I think he brought a couple of examples to the Board of Public Works where some mm-hmm. of them weren't in too bad a shape yeah. for being 90 years old yeah. um, but you know the, the problem is is with the you just don't know when and where those weakness points are kind of on borrowed time you, you are know, on just, borrowed uh, time you never know when another fourth and grant uh, explosion through the concrete is, Eggs, is yeah. going to happen so. right and you know water's a water's a pretty precious commodity yeah um, 
you know, I think one of the things that we're pretty ready, ready, almost ready to do is have the redundancy yeah. uh, of water to the city of Beatrice. And I think I've said it on the program before. We're probably in one of the best places to be as far as water, mm-hmm. um, but we still have to always practice good comp- conservation to mm-hmm. make sure that we protect our water source. Yeah. What did you think about the move to uh, on the savings you achieved on the not the East Court? Uh, water main project at one long Millican Street, taking that money and then applying it toward a computer upgrade in the water department? Um, well, I think that's a really good move. I mean, you know, as everybody knows, um, yeah, everything's kind of run by computers and controls in this day and age. <laughs> and so, you know, I think, again, it's going to bring efficiencies to the water department because we have that. Mm-hmm. And then I think the other thing that uh, I, I guess I'll touch on is... Um, everything's run by computers today and per software that, that runs it. But if you'll notice, and, and, it, and it's a line item in the budget, um, every year with everything that you have, with all the computer programs, you have a maintenance fee. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. Yeah. But that's an ongoing cost that continues to go up and up and up. Yeah. But if you don't have that computer system in place, you're, pro- you're, you're not going to use your water system the way we have it efficiently. So mm-hmm. that, that the computer system we're replacing is built in 1996. It's, so it's, it's done its time. If you think about how many times you replace a computer yourself at home, right. um, it, it served us well. So I think, you know, from Steve Kelly's perspective, he has a, a great way of using that savings. Ideally, the maintenance plans prevent you from having to replace everything as frequently, too. And it gives you the upgrades. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be upgrades in the software. Uh, in some cases, it also has control and over uh, malware and some of those things that can hack into your computer so you've got a lot of safety things that you have to think about. They didn't have to think about 10 years ago. I mean, yeah. um, I think it was a few years ago the city kind of got held hostage a little bit by mm-hmm. a hacker, yeah. and so that brings things to a heightened yeah. level of security you see some of the horror stories of huge cities that have had their entire systems tampered with yes and the cost involved in that you don't want to get into that if no. you can avoid it <laughs> no you don't you know it's just and it's the way of the world so yeah. you know i think i think it's a great move yeah. I, I i thank steve for being foresight to see that and say you know what this is the best way that we can use our savings rather than another project let's put it into the control system yeah uh, armor coat work is to get underway this week. I think there was about a, a day delay. I think it was supposed to start yesterday, but then it rained and right. it was really wet during the morning. I'm assuming that's probably getting underway today. It's getting underway today. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they did the patching ahead of time, and, and they're pretty much ready to rock and roll on that. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, we try to give people as much notice as we can. However, um, the people that do armor coating are really busy. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when they say, well, we're going to be here, it's only a day or two notice. And so that's mm-hmm. tough. We like to send out letters so mm-hmm. homeowners know what's going on. But mm-hmm. at this point in time, we have twice now, we haven't had, the, haven't had enough notice from our contractors. And one of the things you don't do is send the contractors a let note and say, hey, can you delay it a week? Because that could mean a month or yeah. that could be next summer because they've got their schedule planned out either because of Nebraska and weather. Um, we have a slot, and when we get into that slot, you know, we take it. Yeah. This time around, a lot of the streets out here by the radio station, the west part of Beatrice, are the ones that are being armor-coated, some of the better-conditioned streets that you want right. to extend the life on. The reason for sort of approaching it somewhat area by area is what? Well, you know, it keeps them in one area. It keeps mm-hmm. the contractors working basically in the same area. It's a little more efficient for the contractors, mm-hmm. lost le- le- lot less travel time, mm-hmm. and it keeps the congestion just to one area instead of tearing up different areas across yeah. the city. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and some people might ask about the armor coating and why. It can, what, extend the life anywhere from five to ten years on the asphalt instead of having to refinish it. Yeah. Um, so... It is a good cost savings measure as we try to maintain our street quality. Yeah. I think uh, Scott Street right out here to the south of the radio station is one of them that are, is going to get, I think, 
I think it is too. Time. Yeah, and that's a brand new road, but again, it gets down to extending. The It'll life. extend its life yeah. exactly. So that's good, and it's going to be a big route here in the next two or three weeks for people going to the fair. I know that's, it will be, <laughs> and going to the college. I know people take well, that route. Yeah, too, you so. know, you got first you have the fair, and then I'm not sure what the start date of the college is, but it's <laughs> always mid mid uh, August. So. Uh, you know that the traffic will pick up. Yeah. It's you know traffic will pick up everywhere when school starts. It's one of those yeah. things that uh, you have you know about a half an hour in the morning and about a half an hour in the <laughs> afternoon where you have a lot of traffic. Yeah. Uh, one other thing from the board meeting yesterday, uh, in addition to the amount of asphalt patching that's being done in advance of the armor coating crew that comes in, uh, your street superintendent was mentioning about the uh, salt and sand shed. Uh, project to kind of treat the floor in there and then move the uh, material back in. So there's always something to do, I guess. There there is always something to do, and and they keep busy, and, you know, you want to make sure that we, you know, continue to treat that floor. It has a lot of things on it, like salt. Mm -hmm. Um, So just, again, extends the life. Yeah. So that will be done. I think they were going to start hauling stuff back in this week. I think this week. I think it's done. Now it's just hauling stuff back in. Yeah. Hope for a winter like last year when you didn't have to use a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. One of these winters, it's got gone. Yeah, we're going to get payback here pretty yes, soon, we I are. imagine. So. Eight minutes before nine, back uh, to wrap up Ask the Mayor in just a moment. Ask the Mayor today with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan coming up uh, Monday night is at... Uh, Uh, council work session right ahead of the uh, regular council meeting second one of the month Uh, what's on the work session agenda got a couple things Um, we're going to the committees that were formed are going to give updates and reports and those are committees were about how do we tackle the Dempster project how do we tackle the downtown revitalization project and and one of the things that we always need to look at is is maybe some of the ordinances that we have mm-hmm. uh, I think the first one they're looking at is nuisance properties is is you know how do other people compare mm-hmm. so you know it's really early on uh, mm-hmm. they've only been going for about a month now but we're gonna have an update from each one of the uh, chairs on those three projects and then um, as people may have noticed in town uh, Pinpoint Fiber has started laying down, uh, I don't know if they've got the actual fiber blown in, but at least the casings for the fiber in the neighborhoods and the boxes. And, you know, they, they go in people in, in that uh, right-of-way mm-hmm. uh, that the city owns kind of of your property. But yeah. um, you'll see some people, you know, taking some digging going on in that, in that area. Um, but I think one of the things that maybe a lot of people don't understand is what pinpoint does what pinpoint is and the fiber that they're going to bring to the community and and what assets they might have so the pinpoint communication folks are going to come and 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 visit with us about how the process is going Mm -hmm. kind of their timelines uh, what their service are Uh, i want them to touch on if somebody comes in and you know nicks your water your, your sprinkler system line who do you call yeah. and how do you handle some of the, those those issues yeah so one thing i learned uh, from yesterday that you were talking about they do the work within the right of way uh the right of way can vary from yeah. the center of the street yeah. and i didn't really realize that i thought it was i thought it was fairly uniform across all areas but at times it's a little bit different and, and that was kind of like you know, I, I guess you know, as a mayor, you you think, oh, you know all this stuff, but you don't. Um, I figured the right of way was that chunk between your sidewalk and the street. And yeah. This is about a little five foot strip. Yeah. Oh, that's not the case. No. The right of way, or you know, whatever you call it, goes from the center of the street in. A, I think what we decided was a minimum of thirty five feet, and in some places yeah. it's more. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of that area where all the infrastructure can lie and so you know when well when they did my street i was watching and all of a sudden that little patch between the sidewalk and the street wasn't being used and they were about 10 more feet into the yard and i'm going well this is strange and so i asked the question (laughs) well and if you think about it logically too all of the things that go in a right of way as far as utilities lines pinpoint things like this if you relegated it to just by the curb uh, You'd have so much stuff stuffed into such a small area, you probably... And plus, you'd have to tear up streets all the time, too. Right, so, you would, you uh, would. So, so it, it, you know, it, it's... There's a little bit of pain, yeah. but it is progress. And, you know, I think uh, 
you know, I think it's going to be a goal of most communities in the next 10 years to have fiber in the ground and the ability to have high-speed yeah. Internet. I see. Back on the uh, committee report, since this is going to be their first report since you formed those committees, the overall goal of going that committee approach again was what? Just sort of kind of speed up things or make sure there's attention being given to these ongoing projects? Right. I think the the, the goal that I have for those committees are, um, at least for Dempsters and the downtown, we know those are big projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know they're probably going to take more than at least, you know, four years. Yeah. So you have a group of individuals that are working really hard that I hope would put together a playbook and say, okay, so step one, step two, step three, mm-hmm. so that if, you know, you have councilmen go off and you get a new mayor, um, there's a guidebook that says, okay, here's where we are. And here's where we need to get to. And so I guess it's the old adage, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm-hmm. And so having a, a playbook, whether it's like the NFL playbook or whatever <laughs> it might be, at least then you know what steps to take to get to your end game. And mm-hmm. Dempster's is a perfect example. I think everybody would like to see Dempster's torn down in a nice green space there or whatever. But in order to get there, we need to put together some type of playbook because there's still ground to be purchased. Um, there certainly is still some EPA issues we need to take care of. Mm-hmm. And so at least in this way, the people that follow us will have a, a, a guidebook. Just a quick note, we have only 30 seconds left, but I got asked about it the other day. You were talking about downtown. They were wondering about, since we all go by it every day, the Kensington building. Anything new on that at all? That uh... um, We're we're working through some some issues on mm-hmm. uh, some some grants that we have out there. We've had RFPs out there, and we've had a number of developers have been through. Now it's kind of taking a look at those proposals and finding out what they want mm-hmm. from the city and what we can afford. Yeah. Okay. Bob, thanks very much. We'll see you Monday night. All right. Thank you.